Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, True Track Autopilot STC complete for C-172 and C-177. Surefly helicopter concept to be on display at AirVenture. NASA Tedris M satellite damaged weeks before scheduled launch. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's July 21st, and this is Airborne Unlimited. True Track Flight Systems has completed the STC of the Vision Autopilot System. The STC was awarded on July 19th, 2017. This is the first autopilot manufactured by True Track to be approved for certified aircraft. True Track will begin delivering complete autopilot systems during EAA AirVenture. The autopilot system cost is $4,000, the install kit is $1,000, and the STC from EAA is priced at $100. During AirVenture, TrueTrack will be displaying their Cessna 172 aircraft at their outdoor booth 174. The Vision Autopilot is a revolutionary autopilot for the certified aircraft market. This two-access autopilot is capable of following simple and more complex flight plans from nearly any aviation handheld or panel mount GPS in the market today. Vision Autopilot also offers a track selector, altitude hold, vertical speed select, and altitude select pre-select. Included for the first time in any true track autopilot is a new safety feature called AEP. This mode is a bank ankle protection mode that the pilot can easily arm and disarm. AEP is used when the autopilot is powered up but not engaged. In other words, when the aircraft is being hand flown. Workhorse Group will display Surefly helicopter concept for the first time in the U.S. at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2017. They will also display the Workhorse Horsefly package delivery drone. The goal of Surefly is to be safer and more stable than a typical helicopter due to its redundant design, which includes a lightweight carbon fiber fuselage, four propeller arms, two fixed contra-rotating propellers on each arm, a backup battery to drive the electric motors in the event of engine failure, and a ballistic parachute that safely brings down the craft in the unlikely event of an engine failure. Surefly features a gas combustion engine generating electricity and parallel battery pack offering a redundant backup power source, eliminating the need for long battery charging periods between flights. Surefly is designed to be easy to pilot and is expected to be capable of carrying pilot and passenger or cargo up to 70 miles. Early models will be pilot operated. The goal is to introduce future models featuring autonomous flight capable of carrying payloads of up to 400 pounds. The Surefly is currently undergoing ground testing in Ohio and the company anticipates its first human test flight later this year with FAA certification in 2019. The Surefly is expected to cost about $200,000. After the break, NASA satellite damaged in launch prep. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Teros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. NASA and Boeing are reviewing an incident that occurred during final spacecraft closeout activities on the Tracking Data Relay Satellite mission at Astrotech Space Operations in Titusville, Florida on July 14th, involving the Omni S-Ban antenna. The mission team is developing a plan to assess flight acceptance and schedule forward. These additional activities are under evaluation for a planned Tedris M launch August 3, 2017 on an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. 
Orbiting 22,300 miles above the Earth, the Tejas spacecraft provides near-constant communication links between the ground and orbiting satellites, such as Hubble and the ISS. The Tejas M arrived in Florida June 23rd and was transported to the Space Operations Center. It is the latest spacecraft destined for the agency's constellation of communications satellite that allows nearly continuous contact with orbiting spacecraft ranging from the International Space Station and Hubble Space Telescope to the array of scientific observatories. Started in the early 1970s, the Tracking and Data Relay Satellite comprises the space segment of the Space Network. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center manages the development and operations of the TDRA satellites. The current tracking and data relay satellite configuration consists of nine in-orbit satellites distributed to provide near-continuous information relay service. After these messages, Mahler's unsuccessful Skycar prototype for sale. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research, and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Considered by many to be a somewhat shady proposition, Mahler International is offering to sell its original M400 Skycar via public auction as a centerpiece of any car or aircraft collection in a public or private museum. It is the world's first true VTOL flying car to be demonstrated. It is very prevalent on Google and YouTube under M400 Skycar. The price on the aircraft has been lowered in this new listing, and we have a feeling that it may happen again. A salvage company going through the house of a deceased NASA engineer in Pittsburgh in 2015 discovered two massive Apollo-era computers and hundreds of reels of magnetic tape. A NASA OIG report about the find was recently made public through a Freedom of Information Act request. While most of the reels are unmarked, those that are labeled indicate they contain data from the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 missions. Duncan Aviation is pleased to announce that its satellite avionics shop in Kansas City, Missouri has upgraded the Rockwell Collins TDR-94Ds on a Gulfstream 150, bringing the aircraft into compliance with the FAA's mandate for automatic dependent surveillance broadcast out. The Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore and European Aviation Safety Agency have signed a working arrangement that will reduce regulatory compliance costs and facilitate more business opportunities for companies in Singapore and Europe. The working arrangement on airworthiness certification was signed by Mr. Kevin Shum, Director General of CAAS, and Mr. Patrick Kai, Executive Director of EASA. The lightweight Vega launcher for Arian Space's upcoming mission is undergoing final checkout in French Guyana, readying it to receive a dual payload of Earth observation satellites consisting of OPSAT 3000 and Venus. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The power and precision of the U.S. Navy Blue Angels will be on full display during the 65th annual EAA Flying Convention at Whitman Regional Airport on July 24th through 30th in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The world's premier military jet team will be conducting the air show performances and speaking at forums throughout the week at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. The U.S. Navy Blue Angels performances require a larger aerobatic box with a modified crowd line for the afternoon air shows on Friday and Saturday. The modified crowd line will run the entire length of the flight line, about 120 feet west of the regular crowd line. The line will be clearly marked and will run through the entire length of aircraft camping south of Ultra Lights. Visitors will be allowed up to the regular crowd line until 1.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. 
Pilots and crew members with aircraft parked between the two crowd lines will be allowed in the area with a security escort to perform essential tasks from 1.30 to 4 p.m. on Friday and 1.30 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. Full access to the area will be restored after the completion of the daily air show on Friday and Saturday. In addition to the modified crowd line, visitors and pilots should also be aware of the temporary flight restriction on Friday, July 28th from 10 to 11 a.m. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. See you Monday as we start our annual on-site coverage of the annual EAA AirVenture Fly-In.